everybody, I would like to welcome you to an unboxing which I have been so excited for ever since I placed my order on Amazon. It's the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro 13. I've gone for the Core i7 model with 256GB hard drive and 8GB RAM. It cost me £1799.99p. Yes, that's a pretty big hole in my pocket, but I've been meaning to replace my old Windows system which is a Dell XPS 12. That's a fair few years old and came equipped with a second generation Core i7 or something like that. In comparison this Wacom has a 6th generation Core i7 processor. I primarily use my MacBook Pro but my embroidery machine software is a Windows only and the recent update freezes up on my old Dell. Since the Wacom Cintiq Pro 13 didn't work out for me and I also need a Windows computer, Wacom's Mobile Studio Pro seems like a perfect solution. Quickly going over the packaging it came in, outer packaging is a standard Amazon Prime box, kind of their signature packaging really. Inside is a very similar looking box to how the Cintiq Pro 13 was packaged, just different artwork. On the back we have the specs for this particular model outlined using visual icons. It's a very well presented box, on the inside of the top part of the box Wacom have glued in some soft foam surrounded by harder foam to protect the Mobile Studio Pro. The box itself is made from very strong and thick card. I'm so eager to open the Mobile Studio Pro, it looks gorgeous even in its plastic wrap, but I'm going to refrain myself from doing that and get the stuff in this compartment out the way first. This is a power cable with a 3 pin plug for the UK. Next we have the cleaning cloth which looks like it's one of the microfiber type ones. And finally to come out of here are the info leaflet and set of instructions card. Here's Wacom's popular Pro Pen 2 which Wacom are rolling out with their new products including the Intuos and Cintiq Pro ranges. And at last the actual Mobile Studio Pro. The plastic wrap has a little tab so you can easily pull it out. For those of you who have watched my unboxing for the Cintiq Pro 13 you may well remember I had a hard time getting much of it out of the box. Seems like the Mobile Studio Pro has a well thought out packaging. Isn't it just gorgeous? I wish I could get thick rubber heavy duty casing to keep it in pristine condition like those cases that you can get for the iPad Pro. Underneath is the AC power adapter which is neatly wrapped in a coil. The power cable attaches to the AC adapter like so. Inside this are the four colour rings to accessorise the Pro Pen 2 with. This is the Pro Pen 2 case that comes with two extra standard nibs and one felt nib. If I pull out the top part you can see the Pro Pen 2 sits here quite comfortably. The little silver hole here is the built in nib removal tool. I would have found this far more aesthetically pleasing if it was also black rather than silver. On close inspection Wacom have engraved their brown logo on the inside of the pen case. Finally is the pen holder, it allows the pen to be held in two positions, upright and sideways. This plastic insert here is glued into the box, the glue seems fairly strong which is a good thing. And here it is, the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro 13 in all its glory. And no, I haven't taken the back off to make this video, I actually have two in front of me here. I ordered the Mobile Studio Pro back in 1st March of this year. The first one arrived on 18th March, I recorded an unboxing but in about 15 minutes of turning on the Mobile Studio Pro, the bottom third became so hot I couldn't touch it. I tried it again the next day and the same thing happened. I asked a couple of other YouTubers who have the Mobile Studio Pro to find out if it's a normal thing or not. No one else had this problem so I got in contact with Amazon who arranged to send out a new one. I've been given 30 days to return the faulty unit so I'll be packing it up now that I've got the replacement. Along the right side here's the SD card slot, headphone jack, I think this is a microphone hole, the power LED indicator, slide switch for on and off, another microphone hole, spring loaded switch to toggle screen rotation lock and the volume adjustments button. Over to the other side are three USB-C ports. Out of these three, only the middle one can be used with the Wacom Link which can be purchased separately to connect the Mobile Studio Pro with another Windows or Mac device. I presume this is because only the middle USB-C is a proper Thunderbolt 3 connection, but I may be wrong here. The final slot is for the Kingston Security Lock which a pen holder that's included can also slot into. 
Here you can also see the thin grills for the fans to let hot air out in order to keep the Mobile Studio Pro as cool as possible. They are located on both left and right sides and also the top and bottom of the back side of the tablet. The back facing camera is 8 megapixels HD. I couldn't help but notice how easily it got fingerprint marks all over it and rubbing doesn't make it go away either. Other details on the back include a thin strip of raised rubber pad to the left side with some model info painted in white. To the right is another wider strip of rubber with Wacom engraved on it. These rubber pads are raised because they have the grills behind them to allow airflow in a discreet manner. To the front right is the 5 megapixel camera and Wacom engraved along here as well. To the left side are the express keys. With the pen holder attachment, the pen can be positioned horizontally or vertically. The pen holder can hold a pen in a vertical position surprisingly well, it's able to resist knocks and tilting to a certain degree. I didn't expect it to because the pen seemed to have a loose fit when in the vertical position. However, I wouldn't use a pen holder when travelling because the plastic part which slots into the Mobile Studio Pro does not feel strong and I would worry it would snap off or something. I've plugged it into the top USB-C port and since this doesn't have a much needed kickstand I'm going to use a bulky pen stand to prop it up. It surprisingly gives the perfect drawing angle, I'm quite pleased with this discovery. So pleased that I've secretly been using my Chua Hi 12 propped up on this Wacom pen case during the Artflow performance review and onwards. Let's start up the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro and I'll walk you through the setup process. Starting off, you might notice a light leak in the corners of the screen. Wacom say this is simply the trade-off for the bonding process which is used to minimise parallax. Quite happy taking minimum parallax over light leak any day. This part of the setup is basically what you would encounter when setting up any Windows device. It goes through what language you want to use, some legal notes which is more like an essay that you can scroll through, Wi-Fi setup which I skipped because it would mean running downstairs to get the password off my modem, it was more of a mix between I cannot be bothered going downstairs and the fact that I would have to pause the recording. Moving on, I'm given the choice to either customise or use express settings on a bunch of things including sending input data to Microsoft, location stuff, sending browsing data, updates and some sky stuff. My personal advice from having Windows devices for as long as I can remember is to customise these settings and switch off anything that sends data. All the options here send data in some way or another. I found whenever my Dell XPS or Chuai Hi 12 which run Windows 10 were on, my smart TV which mostly runs YouTube for the kids to watch cartoons would lag. On the other hand, I could use my Android phone and MacBook Pro to use the internet, browse YouTube, etc etc without my smart TV having any lags. And I also have a Dell Inspiron 15R with Windows 7 which doesn't cause any lags when I'm using the internet, so it seems to be Windows 10 that's been the internet data sucking vampire here. The last one says, send full diagnostics and usage data to Microsoft. Turning this off sends only basic data, which explains why even after having all these settings off in my Chuai Hi 12, I have to actually put Windows 10 to airplane mode with Wi-Fi off in order to be able to use internet on any other device. Once I was through all those settings, it seems to restart and after a bit of waiting, I'm presented with a screen asking to create an account. I've decided to give it a username but not to enter a password. That way logging in will be faster. This is just my personal preference, I don't really have anything private so it just makes sense for me not to hassle with a password. It takes about 4 minutes for Windows to sort itself out. In the meantime, I get to read through some lovely welcome messages as well as instructions not to turn off the Mobile Studio Pro. I would suggest either making sure it's well charged or having it plugged in. Windows lets us know it's ready to start with a let's start message, after which it jumps straight to the Mobile Studio Pro setup wizard. As soon as I hovered the pen over, it asks to calibrate. The funny thing is though, at the end it asks to move the pen around the screen to verify the cursor is aligned under the pen tip, except there is no hover cursor. I pressed OK and tried to test on the desktop, but still no hover cursor. I guess I'll just have to test when I install Clip Studio. 
The wizard continues by guiding through the customization of express keys. Here you can customize more than just the express keys, such as touch gestures and Pro Pen 2 options. Next it will ask to sign up for a Wacom account. So at this point I'm going to have to get my Wi-Fi password and set that up. But before I got to set up the Wi-Fi, I was bombarded with Windows Defender. It's things like this that put me off Windows. But hey, why not? Let's just run it and see if Wacom has sent this Mobile Studio Pro with pre-installed viruses, which I'm pretty sure Wacom would never do. Anyway, with the Wi-Fi now set up on the Mobile Studio Pro, I can log in. I'll be using my Google account to log in. It's an option I use whenever available due to it being a faster way than signing up with an email account. After logging in, I was given an update notification for the latest driver update. However, after trying three times, I always got an error 124. After searching for answers on Google, I got no solution. I'm guessing if I want the newest update driver, I would need to uninstall the current driver and download from Wacom's website. Under my devices, on the Wacom Desktop Center, it shows the Mobile Studio Pro 13. On this page, there are links to getting started, tutorials, user help, and important product information. Below this documentation section is the settings section. The page does scroll down to show more than touch settings. Underneath my devices is backup, which has local backup options and cloud backup options. Next, we have the marketplace. This takes us to Wacom's marketplace by opening an internet browser. It's a place for Wacom users to purchase software such as Adobe and MoSketch at discounted prices. You get to watch demo videos too. There's even free software such as Bamboo Paper which I believe comes pre-installed anyway. There's also the classic MS Paint installed on here. I did a very quick pen test on these two. Bamboo Paper is showing pressure sensitivity, however MS Paint isn't. To finish setting up my Mobile Studio Pro, I needed to install all my art programs. So here we go starting with Clip Studio Paint X. Since Clip Studio has been my primary art program, I'm going to use this to give my initial impressions. The Mobile Studio Pro seems to be quite fast. On my MacBook sometimes I would get lag from using larger brushes, but Mobile Studio Pro seems to handle it all quite well. The Pro Pen 2 also performs well, the pressure sensitivity feels lovely and lines are nice and smooth. There's no parallax and even though there is some jitter in the line when drawing with a straight edge, it's very minimal jitter. I've tried various graphic tablets in my lifetime and I'm yet to come across a zero jitter tablet. To be honest, the jitter is probably because of the fluctuations in pen pressure which naturally happens when I draw the line. Pro Pen 2 comes fitted with a hard plastic nib. I've heard on the Pro Pen 1 that these nibs scratch the surface of Wacom's Companion 2 a lot, so I wanted to try out the felt nibs. Wacom have included one as an extra. However, I had trouble using the nib remover system. After trying for about 3 minutes, I resorted to using my teeth. Installing the new nib was a case of just pushing it into place which is nice and easy. I honestly am in love with the feel of this nib in comparison to their standard one. It feels like I'm using a fine liner tip. The one thing that I don't like about most of Wacom styluses in general is the thickness of them. The Pro Pen 2 is quite bulky and uncomfortable compared to other styluses such as the Apple Pen and the Chuai's High Pen. I'm doing a very rough sketch of a manga style eye just to get a bit of a feel of the Pro Pen 2 and Mobile Studio Pro. I plan to use this throughout the following month to draw some Disney characters as a continuation of the aerial artwork I started on. I hope to get back to you all with a new video to give a full review of my experience with Wacom's Mobile Studio Pro 13. I'll also do a video testing out various art programs. Until my next video, bye!